This year, the New York Times turns 170 years old. Everyone knows the Times is the paper of record and knows that we have a long history of groundbreaking journalism. But you might not know that we're also the most successful digital subscription news organization in the world. And over the past decade, the Times has made a transformational shift from a traditional ad-based print business model to a subscriber-first digital model. And the implications of that change are felt all throughout the company, including in my team, customer care. The mission of customer care is to restore trust at the toughest moments in a subscriber's journey. It's our job to neutralize problems and get people back to enjoying the times. And as the team that interacts most directly with customers, we're on the front lines of the company's digital transformation. Over the last few years, our focus has been on building a digital-first customer care function that meets the needs of millions of new digital subscribers. But as we started reinventing care three years ago, we had a big problem a lack of useful data about why customers were contacting us. So, for instance, I could tell you how many calls we handled per month, but because they weren't tagged or categorized in any useful way, I couldn't tell you what they were about. And think about what that means. If we don't understand what people are contacting us about, we can't identify trends in customer pain points, we can't figure out what kinds of issues customer care agents are good or bad at solving, we can't gauge customer sentiment, and maybe most importantly, we can't share actionable insights with product teams that are hungry for data to improve the customer experience. So why was this the case? First, our systems were siloed and, and owned by our vendors. We had limited visibility into the data and functionality was largely imposed on us rather than being built around our needs. And when we could make changes, they were difficult and expensive. Changing anything on our automated voice response system, for example, meant submitting a work order that cost thousands of dollars and took four weeks to execute. We owned nearly 0% of our data, and it was fractured and generally unstructured. We had no common definition of what a care interaction even meant or any consistent way of categorizing one. We didn't have transcripts of customer calls, which was our highest volume care channel. And because we used different platforms for voice, live chat, and email, getting a comprehensive view across channels was a hugely manual task. I remember the team spending hours reading through emails and listening to calls whenever we needed to research something. Clearly, this was unsustainable and, frankly, unacceptable for a digital-first company like The Times. So we stepped back and we looked at this mess of systems and we asked ourselves, how do we improve our total infrastructure and care as quickly and flexibly as possible? How do we pay back a lot of the system infrastructure and vendor debt in one fell swoop? And we sketched out three broad phases to get there. First, infrastructure. So untangling our contact center infrastructure and laying the groundwork of an end-to-end -end system that actually gives us visibility into what's happening. Second, connectivity, tying the data together and structuring it in a useful way. And we felt certain that machine learning was going to be an important part of this phase. And third, innovation, using the insights that we gather to deliver real business value. And before I get into what we did, let me pause for a moment to talk about how we develop technology and customer care, because I think it's an important part of the story. Our care team is staffed with both product development and operations folks working together on the same goal at the same time. So that means we have your traditional development team, a product manager, some engineers and designers, as well as people on the care operations side from functions like contact center management, quality assurance, or training. And they're collectively solving big problems. So all of the decisions that we make, including some really technical ones, are made with a much broader set of perspectives than they normally are. And that means we end up with a much more innovative set of solutions. So first, phase one, we started by migrating our contact center systems to the cloud. And when we looked at our options, we felt that Amazon Connect was the best solution to replace this hodgepodge of telephony systems. And we layered on Amazon Connect's IVR, which is the automated voice response system that you get when you call customer support. And this gave us a solid, secure, and flexible end-to-end -end contact center infrastructure for any times customer call and care. But we knew that we could leverage the technology for so much more. In phase two, we started to pull all the pieces together. Once we had Amazon Connect up and running, we started using Contact Lens, which uses Amazon Transcribe and Amazon Comprehend for speech-to-text and natural language processing. And this allowed us to generate transcripts and identify really important customer experience indicators, like sentiment and non-talk time and common words and phrases mentioned in calls. We were then able to tie this data from the Amazon Kinesis streams behind our Amazon Connect instance into our event-based architecture, Hydrate, and then push that data to our data warehouse for our BI tools. We then gathered events from our other vendor tools for email and live chat channels and ship those to Amazon EventBridge. And then we process those in the same fashion as our voice channel to have clean, consistent, and well-connected data. 
And this was a real game changer for us. Having one source of truth for all interactions across channels gives us a powerful window into what's happening to all of our customers, not just the ones that call us. Now that we had good interaction level data, we wanted to categorize it according to customer issue. We started by asking agents to tag interactions themselves, but we found that agents didn't tag every time and it was adding precious time to every call. And this is where we saw our cross-functional operating model come in really handy. Our team chose to build a tagging model using Amazon Comprehend and identified a handful of useful and in some cases unconventional inputs to help validate and refine it. We sprinkled on some utterance data from the Amazon Lex chatbots in our automated voice response system. So think what a caller told the IVR their issue was. We pasted on some tags generated by agents, so what the agent thought the issue was, and layered on evaluations scored by human QA analysts, which told us how accurate the agent tags were. All of these data sources helped us to build a rich model that could tell us what customers were contacting us about with 90% accuracy when compared to just human-generated tags. And the result was a collection of highly reliable interaction-level tags that we could then mine for historical trends and insights. Now that we have the infrastructure in place and, and the innovative work with AI and machine learning and cross-functional insight to validate the approach, we're moving into phase three, where we actually do something with this information. Our goal is to pull actionable insights from this data. We don't want to just share anecdotes from customer interactions. We want to show our internal product teams the recurring issues and customer trends over time so that they can improve their products. And this is, of course, the holy grail of customer support for growing businesses. And we've already started. Last year, using this insights pipeline, we helped our product development teams add dozens of feature changes and bug fixes to their roadmap that they otherwise wouldn't have prioritized. And the feedback that we get from these teams is that they only want more. As we look to the future, we're excited to go even further with AI and machine learning. We're looking at how we can use the newly introduced real-time analysis features from Contact Lens for Amazon Connect to respond to customer issues in the moment. And we're thinking about all the ways that we can use the collection of AI-tagged interactions to learn more about customers and predict how they're going to react. So what could we do, for example, if we matched customer engagement data, like app usage or login errors, with customer care interactions? What if we could estimate the true population of customers experiencing a specific issue, not just the ones who contact us? This kind of analysis is the next level of using AI and machine learning to serve customers better. At the end of the day, we're all only as smart as the data that we have to work with. AWS's AI and machine learning offerings helped the New York Times level up our customer care infrastructure, connect and categorize our interaction data, and find insights that our internal partners desperately wanted. This is the promise of a modern, digital-first customer care function, one that's not just a cost center, but a driver of growth. And we're excited to see how customer care can play an important role in the next 170 years of the New York Times journey. Thank you.